Welcome. This video will serve as a video walkthrough on how to use the film artifacts, effects, and transitions in the editing app of your choice. I will say this is by far one of my favorite products that we've ever released at Tropic Color. Uh, not only is it a ton of fun to use once you're in the editing software for transitions and really cool stylized title bumpers, but I will say it was probably one of the funnest ones to make. Uh, to give you some context, you might think this is just a prop, but we really did buy thousands and thousands of feet of expired film 35, 16. I mean, we have a closet full of film. We probably bought way more than we would ever need, uh, but the result was this pack. I mean, we kind of partnered up with and were able to get some of the highest resolution scans possible for film. Uh, so we worked with labs to scan this at extremely high fidelity. Uh, so the result you're getting is purely authentic. None of this is Photoshop. None of this is, you know, altered or faked. This is what you're getting is simply just months and months of scanning a film that we basically scoured over the years from, you know, different resellers and people who are selling archival prints. Uh, so the, this pack really is a combination of some of the most high fidelity, richest film textures and artifacts that you would ever find. So yeah, before kind of kicking off the rest of this video walkthrough, I have a sizzle reel that we've kind of put together from different projects and campaigns where Jake and myself have already used the film artifacts, effects, and transitions. Uh, so this you know video will kind of give you an idea or some insight on the way that this film artifacts product can be used. So once you've downloaded Film Artifacts and have it saved on your computer, the next step is simply just opening up the folder and I'm going to take a moment to kind of walk you through the various things included in this pack. Uh, it is also worth noting that I am on a MacBook Pro, you know, demonstrating this tutorial, but the processes and steps I'm about to cover are identical for all uh, platforms, operating systems, and apps. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to open up the Film Artifacts folder. You're going to see several folders inside. I just want to take a quick moment and explain uh, what is included. These stills are really great for graphic design. These are scanned in at 6K. So, you know, I'm just going to hit spacebar and kind of show you as I kind of thumb through them. They're very, very high fidelity scans. Uh, so basically we just pulled a high resolution, you know, I think probably 2400 DPI. So if you have any graphical work, maybe you're making a poster, a banner, something for social, these are really, really cool. I mean, honestly, these are bigger than you'd probably need for your canvas size. So definitely scaling them down and working them into some graphical work. Uh, we just included these in here. They are high res PNGs. I mean, you can see these are like 32 megabytes per each one. So. Um, yeah, the 6K stills folder, definitely intended for graphical, graphic design and stuff like that. So yeah, next moving down the list is countdowns. This is very fun. I tend to like to put these right before my timeline. So once I've dialed in my edit, maybe move everything up a few frames and just throw a quick countdown. Maybe it's just a flash of it, just, you know, a single number. We have ones that go through the whole lineup. Uh, these are very fun. And I mean, like I said, these are scanned from the thousands of feet of film that we source. So these are actually legit countdowns pulled off of 35 millimeter that we cut, snipped and scanned. So, you know, you know, as you can see, even just kind of flashing this before a project just kind of gives it a kind of cool film aesthetic. Moving down, dust and dirt is a really fun one. Naturally, in the process of scanning, we had some pretty dirty film. And at first we were like, you know what, maybe we don't include this because obviously these aren't quite the artifacts we were looking for. But the more we thought about it, we thought that you guys might like a quick little flash frame of some really dirty film. I mean, some of this film that we got is like 30 plus years old. So as I kind of thumb through, you know, some of these little blemishes and scratches are simply just from the film being very old. Uh, there's seven of them, very great assets. You can kind of use them to splice in. And as I'm gonna hint at in the walkthrough too, a lot of these dust and dirt can be layered on top of other elements in this pack. So don't just think it's a single asset that can be used in your timeline 
timeline, as I'll touch on later in the various editing apps portion of this, uh, you know, walkthrough, uh, these dirts can be kind of thrown on top of other things too. Moving down the list is flash frames. This is probably my favorite folder inside of this pack. Uh, and this is really where, you know, the title of this product comes and starts to shine. Film, artifacts, effects, and transitions. I use these flash frames for transitions all the time. I'll just kind of cycle through a few of them. These are just quick little one second things that you're going to layer above your footage and just gives like a flash frame or a flash cut uh, that works really well from going from clip A to clip B, just kind of layering that above, which I'll demonstrate soon. Uh, this is just a quick little, you know, way to kind of get out of one shot and into another. And lastly, the head and tail leader. Um, basically this folder, very similar to the flash frames, can be used in a variety of ways. Uh, mostly the way I've used it and Jake's used it is when you have clip A and clip B, kind of just you know, position this right above in the timeline, which I'll demonstrate like the flash frames. It's just a quick burst of, yeah, just various film uh, countdowns and scratches. It's just kind of, this folder has a lot of really unique assets that work really great to flash on the screen to kind of get out of a shot and get into a second shot. So that kind of concludes me just walking you through what's included in the film artifacts, effects, and transitions pack. Uh, the next part of this kind of video walkthrough is going to kind of quickly walk you through Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and DaVinci Resolve. Uh, and if you're watching this and you have maybe Sony Vegas, LumaFusion, or Avid, you know, a different editing app that we're not covering, uh, don't worry. I mean, all of these assets are .mov Apple ProRes files. All editing software should take these files. There's nothing proprietary about these. So if you're watching this uh, kind of video walkthrough and wondering if these will work in your editing app, they definitely will. And the steps I'm about to cover are pretty, you know, basic, you know, they can be mimicked in almost any editing software. Uh, so with that, we're going to dive right in. So yeah, I'm gonna kick things off with Premiere Pro. What's really cool about this product is there's really no install process. I mean, really, you're just working with uh, .mov Apple ProRes files. So yeah, and all editing software should be able to take those .mov files. So yeah, there's no like fonts or plugins you have to install. We're essentially just layering .mov files on top of your footage and changing the transfer mode. So yeah, diving into Premiere Pro, I'm gonna kind of show you what my timeline looks like. I've got two clips, clip A and clip B. And that's where these kind of film artifacts, effects and transitions, you know, transitions is one of the biggest aspects of this pack. It allows you to get from one clip to another. So if I let this play, I've got a shot kind of pushing in on Steadicam on some film and then clip B, continuing the Steadicam shot, parallaxing on a film camera. And basically right now, as it stands on my timeline, this is a hard cut, meaning it just goes from clip A, clip A abruptly ends and clip B begins. There's nothing wrong with that, but I think we can do better. I think we can kind of enhance this transition with an asset from our film artifacts pack. So bouncing over to the desktop, I have my flash frames folder. This is, like I said, one of my favorite folders. There's really no right or wrong re uh, ways to go about this. I'm just going to choose flash frames number one. Um, but like I said, you can use any of these assets and achieve a very similar effect. So I'm going to drag that into Premiere Pro. It's imported. And I am simply going to layer it on the above layer. And as I kind of echoed in the past, uh, you know, before diving into this, pretty much all editing software has a very similar function and utility to this, where you're going to be essentially stacking these film artifacts, effects, and transitions on the above layer. And then you're just going to scale and adjust the opacity or transfer mode of the asset to kind of work as a transition. So for Premiere Pro, I have kind of found that right here, uh, I've got, if you hold shift, it kind of allows you to snap. That is my transition, right? And you can kind of see, this is where I want the, you know, film artifact to really kind of help, you know, uh, lead from one clip to another. I've dragged in the flash frame asset number one on the layer number two. And you can kind of see uh, the footage that we shot on was 5K and I believe these are 4.6K scans. So we just need to simply scale this up. I'm gonna navigate over to the effects controls tab. And if you do not see this, simply go over to window and yeah, just find effects controls and make sure it's checked. So for effects controls, I have the um, artifacts flash frames number one selected you can kind of see it's highlighted right here and I'm going to scale this up just a little bit like I said I'm shoot this was footage that shot on 5k scaled it to 108 it occupies a whole frame and right now if I just let it play you're gonna see it goes from that to that to that 
And that's not really what we want because right now that's not really a transition. It's just a new clip essentially appearing for a little bit, then it's going to the next shot. So this is really kind of the next step is you're gonna pop over to that effects control tab where you adjusted the scale and where it says opacity, um, you know, right underneath it'll say blend mode. I find the best blend mode, you can definitely experiment. A lot of this is very up to interpretation, but I do find the best blend mode uh, for these in this pack for film artifacts is screen. Screen is kind of like, think about green screen, uh, where you can you know chroma key or key out the green. Uh, the screen blend mode or transfer mode actually kind of keys out the black. So a lot of these film artifacts were scanned where there's a lot of black in the frame. So by simply going to screen, it's just keying out the black. So right now, if I let this play, I'll let it go back from the beginning, zoom out a little bit. We got clip A, pushing in on the film. We have the film artifacts come on for a second. And yeah, it kind of adds a really cool little splice. And then maybe right after this X, I'm gonna blade to it. So maybe I don't want the rest of this. And we'll let that play again, kind of. And like I said, this is very subtle and you can layer so many of the assets. Like I said, we have that dust and dirt. You can layer that above. We have the countdowns. You can throw that in the beginning. We have a lot of really cool like flash frames that say like end, which are really kind of a cool way to end the project as if like your project was shot on film and like the last frame says like finish or end. And I'm not gonna go into an extremely long tutorial kind of demonstrating all that because really I just wanted to show you how to layer the asset, change its scale and transfer mode, which mind you is a very simple process, but I really hope by showing you the examples in the beginning of how this can be used, walking you through simply just how to layer it above your other footage, change the transfer mode, kind of gives you some insights on how to experiment and play. I really do recommend just take some time, get familiar with the pack. You're gonna find that maybe you like, you know, number one, number 15 and number 20, that's great. And then maybe just put those in a separate folder. I, I do that with all the editing assets. I have a pack of 50 of them, but I maybe pick my favorite five and those are my go-tos, you know? So definitely take that time, familiarize yourself with the pack and go through and pick your favorites because I really do think that's gonna help kind of expedite your editing workflow. So that kind of wraps up the Premiere Pro portion of this video walkthrough. The next section is going to be Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. These film artifacts, effects, and transitions work really, really well as transitions. Yes, there's other elements in the pack that can be used for graphical design and title work, but I think the real bread and butter of this pack is the transition aspect. And if you look at my timeline, I'm gonna let this play out. I've got clip A, which is uh, kind of a steady cam shot pushing in on some film and then clip B camera kind of parallaxes onto a film camera and it's a very abrupt cut it literally goes from clip A which abruptly ends and then clip B just begins there's nothing really wrong with that but essentially I feel like that's where these film artifacts effects and transitions can really enhance this edit so yeah bouncing on a final cut for a second I'm going to select flash frames number one from the flash frames folder like I said, there really is no right or wrong way to go about this. You could use multiple assets. You can use assets from a different folder. The processes I'm gonna walk you through are identical. So yeah, I'm gonna drag the uh, flash frame number one into Final Cut, and I'm gonna layer it essentially on like video layer two. Video layer one has clip A and clip B, and video layer two, I'm gonna have be this flash frame from the flash frames folder. And as you can see, as I let this play out, it's not really doing what I want it to, right? Cause it just flashes to another clip and then that's it, right? So the key thing uh, for this is you're essentially gonna wanna scale this to taste. Um, obviously, depending on like the resolution of your timeline, you may it may come in like this or it may come in huge. You know, you might be on a 4K timeline or a 6K timeline. So the first thing I recommend is just hit the scale all and dial it to where it's just occupying the full frame. And then the next step is you're gonna to wanna to go over to the blend mode, uh, which is right above opacity and compositing. And if you're not seeing this tab, I'm simply in this sort of like um, film strip icon. If you were in this icon or this other, you know, eye information icon, you might not be seeing what I'm looking at. So make sure you're in that film strip icon. But while you're in there under compositing blend mode, I'm gonna select blend mode and go down to screen. And what screen does for context, screen is kind of like using a green screen uh, keyer where, where a green screen keyer or a chroma keyer will look for any green in the frame of that exact color and remove it. And screen kind of functions very similar to where it looks for anything that's pitch black or you know uh, pure black in the frame and essentially keys it out. 
And a lot of our scans, you know, when we were using like a flatbed scanner in the lab, a lot of the elements that aren't the film artifact actually come in as black or shadows. So using the screen blend mode actually keys that out. And now if you can see, I'm gonna kind of play this back, the film A, clip A plays, it has a little flash frame, and maybe I like it, but right where it has an X, I'm gonna kind of just cut right there. Get rid of the other half. Like I said, no right or wrong uh, you know, answers. I'm just kind of messing around and kind of dialing in something to taste. And that's really cool. And you might be looking at them like, oh wow, that was like very subtle, right? And I simply, there's so many ways you can go about this. Like I said, we have countdowns, so you could throw a countdown in the beginning. We have a lot of like uh, head and tail leaders that have like the word finish or end that can go right at the end of your project. So, and there's also like the dust and dirt assets that you can kind of like put and stack above these. And opposed to kind of taking a very long amount of your time showing you that, I figured I would just show you one case usage in which you would import the asset by just dragging and dropping it above your footage in between clip A and clip B or whatever footage you're using. And then navigating over to the correct area to adjust the composite blend mode to screen to essentially have the black be keyed out and kind of get a little essence of the film artifact above your footage. Uh, definitely feel free to experiment, mess around with it, get familiar with all the assets. And yeah, like I said, it's a very simple product. They're all .mov QuickTime, so you can stack as many or as little as you want to achieve a very similar effect. So yeah, to wrap things up, I'm gonna be walking you guys through how to use the film artifacts inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let me boot that up real quick. You'll see in DaVinci Resolve, I have two clips, clip A, clip B. Clip A kind of pushes in on a film strip and clip B parallaxes around a film camera. And I'm gonna let it play real quick so you can kind of see what timeline I'm working with. So I'm pushing in on Steadicam and then abruptly ends and then it begins this kind of parallax shot. So yeah, essentially what I wanna do is kind of really bridge the gap between clip A and clip B by using a transition. And this pack is film artifacts, effects, and transitions. And there's some really great transitions I can use to kind of flash on the screen for a moment to get out of clip A and into clip B. So I'm gonna minimize DaVinci Resolve for a second, find wherever you have the film artifacts folder, and for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna be using the flash frames. I find the flash frames work really well, hence the name, they kind of flash on the frame, and that's exactly what I'm looking for for a transition. So I'm gonna use flash frames number one. There's no right or wrong ways to go about this. You could choose any, some, all, few, you know, there's any amount of these to kind of dial in the look or effect you're going for. Uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna be using flash frames number one. So with that selected, I'm gonna open up DaVinci Resolve, kind of navigate back over and drag this into my editing tab. And mind you, I am in the editing section of DaVinci Resolve. I imagine if you're using this software, you're very familiar with that. Just thought it'd be worth noting. If you're not seeing what I'm looking at, chances are you're in fusion, color, or cut. So in the editing tab, I just imported my film artifacts, flash frames one, and I'm, a dra I'm essentially dragging it onto video two. Video two is essentially the layer above video one, which has my clip A and clip B. Now if I just let this play one more time, pushing in on the film, clip A, then this happens, and then clip B. That's not really what I want to have happen. Uh, I essentially like this effect, but there's a couple of things wrong with it. I need to scale it up and I need to key out the black. Uh, so it basically just shows the artifacts and not, doesn't occupy the whole kind of screen, if you will. So uh, over in the top right hand corner where it says video, which you can kind of see it's like a film strip icon, uh, you're gonna find the zoom. I'm gonna hover over and just scale the zoom and that's gonna scale it to it just kind of occupies the whole viewport, if you will. And then once you've done that, I find the next step is just kind of na navigating over to the composite part of uh, this sort of parameter, <clears throat> excuse me. And you're gonna wanna change this to screen. So let me just kind of find that, quite a few different ones. You can definitely experiment and play around with different ones. I just wanna simply key out the black. There it is, cool. And to kind of give you a little bit of like context of what screen does, it kind of functions the same way a chroma key works against a green background, where chroma key is essentially looking for that exact hue of green and removing it from the shot. Screen is doing that with anything that's black in the image. And a lot of our film artifacts, the way they were scanned, there's a lot of black in the image that kind of needs to be subtracted. So by using screen, now if I play this timeline again, got clip A, pushing in, 
and then the film artifact happens for a brief you know glimpse on the f f camera or uh, in the edit and then I think I just cut it right there because sometimes these film artifacts you might find are too long like it's just kind of dragging on for too long so maybe you just want to flash for like two or three frames there's nothing wrong with going into the asset and maybe blade tooling it a little bit so let me play that again now it's just going to flash for a moment done and yeah, you might be thinking like, wow, that's actually like very simple, um, you know, and that's where I really kind of want to challenge you guys to feel free to stack multiple assets. We have that dust and dirt folder. You can layer that above on say like video three. And you know, we have the countdowns. You can throw those in the beginning. There's a lot of ways you can use the film artifacts, effects and transitions to really enhance your timeline with a lot of like film like textures. Uh, for this tutorial, instead of taking up too much of your time, I really just want to walk you through how to use uh, these, you know, essentially in your uh, DaVinci Resolve. And as you saw me demonstrate, it's very simple. These are ProRes files. You'd essentially just layer them above your footage, scale and transfer mode, and that's it. Uh, and I think where the real artistry comes from is from you guys navigating through the all the you know ones we've included and kind of selecting the one that really speaks to the footage. You know, you might find that uh, certain ones work better than others, and that's kind of for you guys to decide. So yeah, thanks for watching. Just kind of want to kind of walk you through, give you a crash course on how to use this inside of DaVinci Resolve. So yeah, that pretty much wraps this up. Just want to take a moment and close this out. Thank you so much for watching, and I really do hope this was helpful. If you have any additional questions or concerns or issues that you're having, feel free to reach out to our customer support team, which is here, chopacolor at gmail.com. Our team is there ready to help you if you have any additional issues. Once again, I'm excited to see you know what y'all can do with this product. I think it's a very robust toolkit for transitions and just really giving your product and project a very cool film aesthetic look and feel. Uh, but once again, from the Tropicolor team, thanks for your support and yeah, keep creating.